Hey guys, just want to show you the PEX, how I'm uh, laying it down. I got about not quite half the building done so far. And manifold. Connected, I got it connected to the manifold too. I connected each run as I'm going along, just so I know the length and everything. So what I did to mark this out, as you can see all the orange marks. So got a can of upside down marking paint and each one of these marks is exactly a foot. So I used this piece of wood here, marked it, and this is 14 feet exactly. So I marked um, foot markings on it and uh, used it on the floor. So I did about every two sheets going this way. So eight feet spacing and roughly the same um, going the other direction. So basically I made like a grid is the pecs laid down so far nailed by hand I don't have the pecs staple gun uh, if I was doing this on a professional basis or if I had multiple buildings of this size to do I would certainly invest in the staple gun but I can manage without it so these are the staples that we're using two and a half inch uh, Marco I believe is the company that makes them I get them from supplyhouse.com this whole kit this was a kit <clears throat> I bought at supplyhouse.com it came with um, all the rolls of PEX and it came with the manifold and the fitting the uh, PEX fittings, that is. Um, it did not come with the PEX pal, obviously, or it did not come with the staples. I actually think I, um, I think the kit came with wire ties because it's designed to mount on a wire mesh. So I think what I did is I ordered the parts separately, and it was just a little bit cheaper than getting the kit because I didn't need like the wire ties, for instance. I'd, I'd rather take that money and put it towards the staples. So how I laid this out um, is this, this is an eight loop system or supposed to be an eight loop system. I'm not quite sure that I'm gonna quite make it to eight loops. I might have a spare loop in the manifold there, um, which is fine. So what I did is, is I took each roll is 300 feet of PEX. And I think I gotta roll around here somewhere. There it is right there. Each roll is 300 feet. So what I did is in the first roll, I started from the manifold, um, went down on the outside edge of the building. And I kept this spacing. I know I said I was gonna do six inch, but I kept it a foot throughout because I was doing some research and people say just keep it evenly spaced. So that's what I did here. So it ran on the outside, turned, and then um, start doing your loops. Um, you always want to start from the furthest point of your manifold. So like I said before, I chose to put my manifold next to the, my man door here just because there's no utility room in this building. So I wanted to utilize as much floor space as I could. So I opted to put the uh, manifold, like the door's gonna swing in and it'll be behind it. And you can't really put anything here anyways, like I said before. So, so you run the loops. And then eventually you're gonna get to the end of the 300 foot roll. So what I did was, when I got to the point I knew I couldn't go 
back, turn, and come back again because I didn't have enough length. I uncoiled the, the rest of the, the uh, roll, got the other end of it, and I worked backwards. So I stuffed the other end in to my return, put the fitting on, and came down and then stapled it backwards and used up the rest of the slack. And I think the end of, see this loop right here is, is the end of that first roll. So the, the loop's gonna end up wherever it's gonna end up. There's one here, this is the second loop right here. So let me see if I can, I got kind of a crude drawing here. So this is the manifold right here. Uh, the one foot space markings here. So this is the first roll. Is you're gonna come down and then turn, one foot spacing, turn, turn, and then at some point you're not gonna have enough to get back or to go back down and back again. So I unspooled the, uh, the marker's not working here. I unspooled the remainder over to here and then I worked backwards. I took this end, put it inside the manifold, and then stapled it backwards. And then you're going to end up, like if I say do a loop, uh, actually this needs to come down here. So if you do a loop, like let's say you're going to run out of piping right about there, then you, you do a loop. And then that's one coil. And then when you start your other you got your new roll, you come down, over, you come down, you're gonna wanna turn, and then down, and then keep doing your loops. And then you do the same thing when you almost get to the end, wherever that ends up, feed the other end into the manifold. And then you, what's nice about it is each loop will be identical in length, which is nice. Um, these, this manifold does have flow adjusters on it. So, if you do have a loop, I'm probably going to have a loop that's going to be shorter than the rest. Um, so, we can adjust accordingly to that. Alright, well, let me finish this up. And I'll, I'll show you what it looks like in the finished product. Alright, guys. Well, here it is. All complete it, uh, everything laid down here it took uh, seven loops so I'm gonna have a extra one oh, which that's fine As you can see, all evenly spaced, all 12 inches, except for a couple areas, maybe a little closer, but for the most part, everything is as evenly spaced as I could get it. It's a lot of work down on your hands and knees. It's, I went through uh, one, two, six, I'm on my seventh box of staples. So it definitely takes quite a bit. I stapled the crap out of it. The concrete guy told me to make sure I staple it every couple of feet at least. So that's what I did here. And everything coming up here. Up into the Pexpel. And all the lines are connected. The next step would be to put my pressure gauge tester on it and pop it up to about 80 PSI and we'll let it sit there and make sure there's no leaks. Um, this last um, loop is about no, 100 and no, I, got, I got the markings I think it's like 150 175 feet so I had to cut the last loop 
which is fine. We can adjust that with the flow restrictor when we hook everything up. Uh, these unused ports here, I'm going to order some caps from supplyhouse.com. Um, so we'll just cap those and, and uh, everything should be good. So this is this part of it's complete. It's just about ready to to pour here. I got a, a few things. I got a couple spots I want to put in a couple extra staples. Um, I got some left over anyway, so I'm also use them up. And I want to secure that water pipe right there. Um, I want to put a couple two hole straps and um, secure them into the concrete just to hold it up against the wall there before they pour. So I don't want to do that. But this is about it here. So this is doable by anybody. I'm, like I said, I'm in no means a professional. I'm just a schmuck with a hammer and a bunch of staples and a bunch of pecs and uh, watch a lot of YouTube, YouTube videos on it. So I'm just trying to pass along um, the info on how to do this. You know, a lot of people make it seem like it's a big deal. It really isn't. Not only they charge ridiculous amounts of uh, labor to do this. And I mean, I've been at this uh, a couple weekends. It took me to do this, maybe two and a half weekends. Um, they're not, I wasn't even working full days. So, I mean, you got to figure with a crew to come in here with a, with a staple gun and everything, they could probably bang this out and you know, a morning or an afternoon or something, but they get ridiculous money. Uh, this was this was ten grand, not including the manifold, to get this done. So, and I got about uh, oh, probably four, four probably forty five hundred max in, in materials. That's including the staples and everything. <clears throat> the staples are not cheap. They're um, twenty five bucks. Uh, package so if you get you know four packs it's a hundred bucks um, so that's what I used right there Malco is the company I think I pronounced it wrong earlier uh, two and a half inch for two inch foam board and if you're using one inch foam board you want to use um, inch and a half staples so all right well that's it for now uh, I'll try to get some shots here when they pour this floor um, I might make a little short video on pressure testing this thing. Um, so that'll be my next, my next endeavor here. All right. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks. Like, and subscribe if you, uh, like these sort of simple videos. Thanks. Bye.